Okay, so let's focus on dialing in the rhythm guitar tones in this video. Now, at the very beginning of this course, I mentioned that I am not going to be using any third-party plugins outside of Logic except for one, and that one plugin that I'm going to be using is my guitar amp sim. Now, guitar tones are a very personal thing. They're a very subjective thing. But personally, I am not a fan of Logic's amp designer. I mean, it's good for clean tones and crunch tones, but anything beyond that, if you need a high drive tone or a heavy metal tone, it just doesn't cut it for me. But if I do need to use a heavier tone and all I can use is amp designer, I'll typically go with the brown stack distort preset and then I'll tweak it from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a combination of amp designer and my favorite uh, amp sim plugin at the moment. And I'm going to sort of blend these two amps together. So for the left channel here, I'm just going to keep this on amp designer for now. I'm going to mute that for now. And I'm just going to work with the right channel. And on the right channel here, I'm going to bring in a third party plugin. This is from Neural DSP, and this is the Archetype Petrucci X. Now there are mono and mono to stereo versions of this. I'm gonna keep this in mono, just so that both of my guitar channels are in mono. And let's see what this sounds like on its own. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that's got some other effects and stuff on it. That's really a gnarly tone. That's not quite what I'm going for here. Let me try one of these other presets, the Awaken the Master preset. Maybe a little too high gain. Like if I was just playing the guitar by myself, that might be a gain level I might use. But whenever I have left and right rhythm guitars, I actually tend to dial back the gain a little bit. You don't need as much gain when you have dual rhythm guitars, or even in some cases you could throw in like a middle rhythm guitar and have triple rhythm guitars. So the more rhythm guitars you have, the less gain you need. <laughs> And I love the mid boost on this amp as well. Okay, so I like that tone, kind of like a really heavy crunch uh, or a kind of a lower heavy drive uh, type of sound. Let's see if we can get that to blend well and maybe even match uh, the tone of the brown stack a little bit here. We're never going to be able to get it the same, but I can try to kind of get it somewhat the same. <laughs> So yeah, this is definitely has a little more bottom end to it. And don't forget, Logic's Amp Designer has a bunch of different mic models over here. Each mic is going to give you a different tone as well. Okay, so that with the Petrucci amp in. And if you need to quickly A and B different tracks, a way to do that with soloing is you can hold option and click solo on a track. And this will just isolate that one track and unsolo the other one. When you normally solo, it just keeps all of your previous solos active. But if you hold option, this allows you to go back and forth between two different tracks and compare them. So 
So two different tones, when you have two different tones like that, that does also help with your mono compatibility when you listen to the mix in mono because the left and right rhythm guitars don't have exactly the same tone. Although the Logic amp seems a lot noisier because it doesn't have a gate built into it, whereas the Petrucci amp uh, has a gate built into it. So I think what I'm gonna do is on my first rhythm track here, I'm gonna go to dynamics and I'm gonna add in the noise gate before the amp. And a good spot to check that will be right here where there's some gaps in between the riffs. So the threshold is going to determine where the gate opens and closes, or actually where it closes. If you have this way down, you're not gonna get any gate. Except that just the softest points. So let's pull that up a little bit. Pull up the look ahead a bit pull up the hold and release a bit. That'll make it sound a little more natural. And the hysteresis controls the difference between the threshold where the gate opens and where the gate closes. So this can help prevent the gate from quickly turning on and off when the signal is hovering around the threshold you've set. So you can see if I put this down at a lower value, and those quicker pauses, it's not gonna be as quick to close the gate. Whereas if I put it at a higher value, it will. So imagine if my threshold is negative 34 dB, that's where the gate is going to close when the signal drops below negative 34. If the hysteresis is at zero, that means when the signal goes above negative 34, it's gonna open up the gate. But if you start pulling this down, this means that the gate will open five dB lower than the threshold. So let's just try playing with the release time a little bit there. Let's hear both of those guitar parts with the drums. I'll go ahead and mute the bass for now. Okay, I wanna do some bus processing on the guitars as well. I've got the right channel a little lower than the left channel. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of these, go up to track, go to track stack. We're gonna put these in a summing stack. So this whole stack is just gonna be rhythm guitars. I'll add a little more gain on the individual channels, and then what I'll do is I can do my attenuation on the actual track stack itself. Now, typically these days, I don't add compression to distorted rhythm guitars like this. I might add some compression to clean guitars, but I found that when I add compression to the rhythm guitar, or at least too much compression to the rhythm guitar, it just kind of squashes it. It doesn't help with the details either, unlike the drums where the compression really helps with the details. So these days I tend to not compress the guitars too much, if at all. But one thing I do like doing with the guitars is I like to add a little bit of saturation just to fatten them up a little bit. And I may also add some EQ. So let's add the EQ first. I'm just gonna use the stock channel EQ for this. And I like to beef up the guitars by boosting like this range, kind of like in the five to 1K range-ish. And then I also like to add a high pass filter somewhere around 60, 70 hertz in that range to get rid of any of the, like the sub information that might be in the guitar that also helps make room for the bass. So let's figure out where that uh, little emphasis, uh, where I want that little emphasis to go. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
that sound up there, I don't want that. That's like raspy and nasty. But down here, it almost like accentuates the, the sound of the speaker or the simulated speaker cabinet in this case. <laughs> And I may even choose to add in a little bit of bass right before the filter. Now, if you want to warm your guitars a bit, if they sound a little too raspy, you can try adding the Chroma Glow plugin. So I'll go ahead and add that on there. And specifically, if you're trying to warm the guitars, you can try out the analog preamp model. Just a touch of drive in there with the analog preamp just to fatten up and warm those guitars. Okay, so let's listen to those with the drums, and I'm going to have to pull back the rhythm guitars a bit. And I'll go ahead and add the bass in, even though it's just DI right now. And let's check out the bridge breakdown section as well. I don't know if you could notice that, but the gate closed right around here somewhere. It sounded a little unnatural. So at some point, I may come back here and automate out the gate just for this section to make sure that this note lingers through this pause. But we'll talk about that more when we get to automation. Awesome. So I think we've got the rhythm guitar tone nailed for the song. In the next video, we're going to move on to the bass guitar amp and bass tone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.